Hello, this is part two of the chapter Evaluation and uh, Fundamentals of Business, section one, part two. As we have discussed in uh, the first video, that this chapter is divided into two sections section one and section two. And uh, section one we have part two part one one we have already discussed and this part two will cover the topics economic activities by ancient people number one number two rise of the intermediaries and number three is transport so what activities were the ancient people involved in and uh, who were the middlemen and what were the method of transport which was used to transfer goods from one person one place to another place so let let's begin with the, the economic activities by ancient people agriculture and domestication of animals were the most important economic activities that were used by the people the ancient people they used to be involved in the agriculture and domestication of animals now due to the favorable climatic conditions due to the favorable climatic conditions farmers were able to raise two or more than two crops in a year because of the favorable climatic conditions the farmers they were able to raise two or three crops in a year and they were able to generate surplus and savings for the further investment means they were able to produce more fruits more crops and uh, after fulfilling their needs they used to have surplus they used to have enough savings so that these, the savings can be used in order to finance agriculture and uh, in order to purchase animals workshops or karkhanas <clears throat> workshops or karkhanas were the places where skilled artisans worked and converted raw materials into finished goods and uh, these finished goods were high in demand then we have family based apprenticeship system means apprenticeship system means that a person works under the expert in order to be trained that is apprenticeship the person has to work under expert in order to get training the system was family based family based means the son of a carpenter used to learn the skills of carpentry from his family members similarly the children of uh, electricians they used to learn 
द स्किल्स ऑफ द ट्रेड दैट इज स्किल्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी फ्रॉम द फैमिली मेंबर्स सो दैट इज वाइट इज फैमिली बेस्ड आर्टिशियंस क्राफ्ट मैन स्किल्ड लेबरर्स दे लर्न डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ स्किल्स and knowledge and it passed from one generation to the another generation so what type of economic activities were people involved in economic activities are those activities which people undertake in order to earn an income so here we are discussing about three type of systems we are discussing about agriculture and the domestication of animals the first economic activity then we have discussed about the workshops the karkhanas present day industries and then the family based apprenticeship system and this system was the passing of skills from one generation to the other generation example potters they used to teach their children how to make pots how to make earthen utensils similarly the craftsmen the artisans the skilled laborers they used to teach their children they used to pass the knowledge the skill to the generations so these were the economic activities in which people they were involved our next topic of discussion will be rise of intermediaries intermediaries are the middlemen those who are involved in trade they are the middlemen they were the agents agents or middlemen are known as intermediaries of trade so they played an important role in the promotion of trade in order to support trade in order to promote trade middlemen or agents of trade they have played a very very important role they provided financial help to the manufacturers and uh, these people they helped in the distribution of goods from one person to the other person so what in which work they were involved they were financing the trade and also they were helping in distribution of goods and services this consisted of a commission agents brokers distributors both for wholesale and retail goods the intermediaries intermediaries the agents the middlemen they were commission agents number 1 number 2 they were the brokers and number 3 they were the distributors both for the wholesale trade as well as for the retail trade the institution of jagat sheets institution of jagat sheets they also developed and exercised greater control during the mughal period and during the east india company so jagat sheets they played the role of intermediaries the agents the middlemen the brokers the agents during the mughal period as well as during the east india company rule these jagat sheets were rich businessmen and they were from money lender families they were big businessmen they were from the money lender families 
they were involved in banking business they used to provide finance money to the business and at the same time they used to help in the distribution of goods and services most of the foreign trade was financed by loans and uh, advances the interest rate for the export trade was higher in comparison to the import trade in, in comparison to the internal trade because in international trade in export and import trade the risk involved is more than the internal trade or the home trade it means that the in interest which they used to charge it was more for import and export trade because of more risk involved in it and it was less for the home trade that is the internal trade means the trade within the country Indian subcontinent they enjoyed the balance of trade as export exceeds import balance of trade we have done this topic before the balance of trade the balance of trade means a trade in which the export exceeds the import it means the ex the export is more than the import so indian subcontinent they used to enjoy the balance of trade because export was more than the imports and large margins of profit was there in the latter stage afterwards commercial and industrial banks the commercial and industrial banks developed to finance trade and commerce they developed to finance trade and commerce and agricultural banks were also developed so that loans can be provided to both the short and long term to the farmers agricultural banks they were set up so that both short term and long term loans short term and the long term loans they can be given to the farmers so the middlemen the agents the brokers intermediaries played a very very important role in order to support the fine the the trade in medieval india our third topic of discussion of part 2 is transport how were the goods goods carried from one place to another place in the ancient times what were the different modes through which goods they used to be carried from one part of the country to the other part of the country transport or transportation refers to the physical movement of goods from the place of production to the place of consumption it means the movement of goods from factory or industries to the market the movement of goods from factories or industries to the market is called transportation or transport it is the physical movement of goods from place of production to the place of consumption that is from the industry to the market so transportation helps in the movement of goods and passengers from one place to another place with the help of various modes and what are the different modes of transportation in ancient times the different modes or means of transportation used in ancient times were number 1 was the roads and number 2 was maritime trade 
रूट्स एंड मैरिटाइम ट्रेड रूट्स वर द लैंड ट्रांसपोर्टेशन एंड मैरिटाइम ट्रेड वर द वाटर ट्रांसपोर्टेशन सो टू मीन्स ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्टेशन वर यूज इन एंशियंट टाइम्स द लैंड ट्रांसपोर्ट नंबर वन नंबर टू द वाटर ट्रांसपोर्ट we know that india has contacts with the outside world through two means our borders are connected to land boundaries also and our borders are connected to the sea boundaries also those countries which are connected to india with the land boundary in those countries the goods were sent through roadways to the land we know that in the ancient times the people they used to cross the country through the mountain passes amerian and persian merchants they used to carry goods from india to the part of china and uh, they used to take the help of these mountain passes a mountain pass is a gap between two mountains a space between two mountains a gap between two mountains where the people they carry their goods from one place to another place this was the roadways this was the land transportation and roadways plays an important role in transporting goods to those countries which were connected to india with the land boundary we also know that india has the longest coastline which stretches from gujarat and uh, it is bounded by the bay of bengal in the east arabian sea in the west and uh, the indian ocean in the south so india used to have a large uh, maritime trade a water transport in order to transfer goods from one place to another place all the countries in the east and the west are connected to india through this water trade and 95% of the india's trade was carried through waters so transportation played an important role along with industry and agriculture in order to move goods from the place of production to the place of consumption and along with the transportation the banking system in the country also played an important role in the country